Hi, everybody. I just want to give uh, time for everybody to log in just to make sure that uh, I don't start without you all. So if you will just hang in there, I'll start within one minute. All right, so I do want to thank everybody for uh, joining us today on our webinar for AVK Industrial Products, uh, Threaded Inserts and uh, Tools, uh, brought to you by Olander. Uh, my name is John Butler, and I want to thank everybody for, for uh, joining me today. I have uh, AVK employees, uh, vendors, reps, customers, and prospects all joining us today, so I want to thank you all for for logging in with us for another webinar. Uh, we do these every uh, couple months and uh, we also have a YouTube where you can find all of our videos as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and begin. Let's have some fun today. I, I hopefully that this will all uh, give you some information, be educational and uh, hopefully a little entertaining as well. So um, introduction to Olander. Um, Olander is a fastener distributor Located on the West Coast, we have one location in Woodenville, Washington, one in Rancho Cordova, California, and Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale is in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. We will have uh, question and answers on the top or bottom as you scroll up or scroll down on the Zoom. You'll have an opportunity to put in your questions that uh, I'll go ahead and, and take a look at as well and try to get all of those back to you. Um, answer any questions that you have, but hopefully we cover all that through the uh, webinar today. So there will be also uh, um, information on Philip Olander, who started Olander Company. We are a family business. Uh, introduction to the AVK Industrial Products, blind threaded inserts. I'll get into some design applications, take a look at uh, how Faster is being uh, installed. Um, installation tooling that you can use. And uh, we'll go through a quick poll question on troubleshooting. And then I'll go through some of the uh, main troubleshooting issues that uh, people might have. And just to talk about that, um, usually it's not the inserts. Usually it's because of either the application uh, that you need assistance with or any issues with the uh, tooling as far as air pressure and things of that nature. And then we'll have a 10 minute video as well and then uh, we'll go through and uh, take a look at the questions and answers and uh, give you some uh, feedback. Okay. So my name is John Butler. Uh, I'm a director of new business development with the Olanda company. I do hold a certified fastener specialist certificate. So basically that means I, I took a week long class. I've been in the business for 27 years and uh, I passed the test from the Fastener Training Institute that uh, gave me that title and a certificate. Um, I can be reached at Twitter, as you see there, and also on LinkedIn. So one thing I want to uh, let everybody know is this is being recorded. So you don't have to take any notes or worry about going back or whether you've missed anything. Um, this will be sent out to everybody that has registered. So um, this is gonna go about 35 minutes, I would say. So um, if you have to check out, uh, we'll also send this uh, recording out to you uh, via email as well. So as I stated, those are the three different uh, locations that we have. We're all under one company, one owner, which is Ron Olander, but three different titles as of this point, the Olander Company, the Olander Corporation, and Olander Fasteners. We have one website, and that is at olander.com. So uh, Philip Olander, um, he was a war hero. Uh, Phil was in the um, Army, let's see here, I apologize, Army Air Corps and uh, a bomber, uh, 303rd Bomber Group. And his uh, B-17 bomber was shot down uh, during World War II. And Phil was a prisoner of war for, in 1944. 
When Phil came back home, um, he looked at the way that um, he had to try and find uh, aircraft parts and knew that having inventory was very important. So when he started his fastener company, he kept that same theory of uh, and commitment to holding fasteners and taking care of people. And that propelled uh, Olander Company to the status of a global distributor. So we um, sell to over 45 different countries. And, and the reason that we do that is because of our proprietary fasteners that we do carry, some of the major uh, manufacturers in the world, uh, but we carry stock. So from standard fasteners, nuts, bolts, and washers to proprietary items, uh, we have over $8 million worth of inventory. And uh, everything that Phil started back in the day in 1962, uh, we hold true today. So uh, we appreciate um, the longevity of the company. Uh, we are a third generation uh, fastener company. And uh, we do things just the way that uh, Phil Olander started it back in the day. So AVK Industrial Products, uh, we'll talk about um, the different names that they have, whether someone calls it a rivet nut, a riv nut, nut certs. Uh, all of these are basically a blind threaded insert or stud. Um, what is a blind fastener? So um, blind means you're putting it into a panel, into a tube, uh, into one side and you don't have to get to the opposite side of the application. So that's why they call it a blind fastener. So even if it's a round tube, we can put threads on the inside. If it's very thin sheet metal, we can put threads on uh, the inside of, of, of sheet metal. So it's, it's giving you an option uh, in order to have threads and high strength applications. California is a SoCal uh, company. They uh, are with Abbey Bank. It's AVK Industrial Products. They have an 80,000 square foot facility, as you see here, and they run a lean operation. Um, as you see, it's 240 pieces per minute they can produce on the different fasteners. So as you see in the, in the picture here, we also have some um, spline, 12 spline, uh, hex head cap screws, uh, specialty parts. These are all made to order specials uh, for the aircraft industry. So they, they also have uh, other operations that they do as well. And they also manufacture compression limiters. But uh, what we're gonna uh, look at today is uh, the blind threaded inserts or rivet nuts. So AVK came up with the spin wall technology. And uh, basically what's that stating is that they're going to fill the hole, okay? As the insert is collapsed, it, it forms threads or brings the threads up and forms a flange on the back side, and it fills the hole. That's what that means by spin wall technology. So it's going to be a tight fit on the uh, application. You see in the pictures here, you have a rivet nut. That's the AL series. And then they also have the stud as well, a uh, rivet stud. So as you can see, they look very similar and, and they are because the uh, rivet stud is a stud that is threaded into the standard AL rib nut. And after they thread it all the way in, they uh, hit it or, or put a uh, dimple inside the threads there that lock that stud into place so that it can't come undone or it won't unscrew from the rivet nut. So when you install that, it will uh, put a stud um, sticking out of the product or of course with the ALs and AKs, AOs, which you're seeing here, uh, will form a uh, threads on the inside. So the, the biggest part about rivet nuts and the, and the great way that ABK has designed this is that you're putting in threads after you've already plated the part or painted it um, so you don't have to mask the threads. So this can be put in post any metal finishing um, that's being done. So it's going to save you um, a lot of money and uh, time by not having to worry about cleaning up the threads because the threads are put in after you've done those applications. So what are some of the applications uh, for inserts? And they are used everywhere. You're looking at automobiles. Uh, the Tesla here in California is produced with uh, threaded inserts. 
to aerospace, lawn and garden. Um, there's so many different applications that you wouldn't even think about and realize till you uh, took apart a, a product or you go out and see a customer that, that has an application um, where you can put in a threaded insert. And this is gonna save them time and money. They're gonna, we're gonna improve how you've assembled your product. So here's examples of some of these. And uh, one of the best ones that I really like is uh, the leg leveler application. So uh, when you're putting in a leg level and you see that down on the bottom in the center, uh, the leg leveler is adjusted. And the old way of doing it was you had a nut on the inside and a nut on the bottom. And when you wanted to adjust that leg leveler, you loosened up those nuts, but you had to get into the inside of the application in order to loosen up that nut so you can adjust the height. Well, when you put in a rivet nut, you don't have to tap that piece of metal, of course, meaning you have, don't have to put threads on the inside. You just put a rivet nut inside of there and it's not going to turn. And you can adjust that leg leveler without having to uh, loosen up or get into the inside of the channel or the material in order to adjust that rivet nut. So ABK has studs and rivet nuts for all different types of materials, whether it is in uh, plastic or composite material, we have inserts for that. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit. Um, whether it's a bike bicycle frame, as you're seeing up top there on a round tube, we can put a thread inside of there, the rivet nut, and it's never going to come loose. It's going to keep tight. So when you're putting the bicycles together, um, they can put a uh, water bottle cage or a holder frame uh, and attach it to the tube. It's a very simple application that uh, doesn't require any tapping or machining of the part. So here are some of the design benefits. So the hole filling, as I talked about um, with the ABK inserts, you're going to have a very high strength or high torque uh, fastener that's not going to spin in your application. You don't have to worry about it coming loose. Um, the threads on these are internally rolled threads. They're not cut threads. So it's going to be much stronger threads than when you're going to tap a, a product. So um, the fasteners are the installation tools that we have for these. AVK uses a spin spin arrow base tool along with their design of a thread adaption kit that makes it very simple, a pneumatic way to install these inserts. We also have hand tools as well, and we'll get into that uh, also. Um, after you've installed the uh, rivet nut itself, you don't have to worry about those threads um, being misformed or any dilation of the thread. Um, this means basically you don't have to worry about retapping it or uh, the fastener not going into the rivet nut itself. Um, the AL and AK series inserts, this has a very wide selection of grip range or a wide grip range. So if you're putting in a, let's give an example of a quarter 20 insert in the AL, you can go down from an 032 thickness all the way up to a 0.165 material thickness with one rivet nut. Now, the old ways of doing this was the, the old style rivet nut had a very small grip range. Well, with the ALs and AKs, you have a very good uh, grip range. You don't have to have as many um, different inserts in order to cover the different materials thicknesses that you're putting it into. And they have many different plating options as well and different materials, uh, aluminum, brass, monel, uh, steel, uh, some of the uh, different materials that we have as well. So um, some different designs for different applications. So the, the main rivet nut has a hole all the way through it. It's tapped on the bottom and it is collapsed, forming a flange on the back side. Well, if you need uh, where you don't have any moisture or, or no um, FOD is going to get into the application, 
you can use a closed end insert. And, and as you see in the image here, it doesn't have a hole all the way through it. You can't see the threads on the inside. So this is great for watertight applications. So it says, see page 11 inside the uh, engineering manual of the catalog, which most of you got a link to, and we'll also have that on our website. Um, you will have a, a watertight application. And then we can put a sealed head underneath that as well. And that will keep any moisture from getting into uh, underneath the flange or into the application and the closed end. It's not going to have a hole all the way through it. There's no way for anything to get to the inside. Uh, also, we have a wedge head design. A uh, wedge head, um, it has like a flower petal uh, top to it. So that when you install this, you're going to see instead of just a round head, it's going to look like little petals. And that's for identification. So we can tell that if you were to put in a wedge head, um, and the reasons being coming up shortly, you're going to make sure that you can see that difference. Okay. So what this has are little protrusions that come underneath the head that stick out that will bite into material. So softer materials um, is a great design for. And also for it has excellent grounding uh, capabilities as well. So it's going to bite into that material a little bit more than the standard AL series or AK series inserts. So they've thought of a lot of different ways, a lot of different um, designs uh, for different applications. So here's some of the standard uh, parts that we have. I showed you the AL before. The RN is considered the rivet nut. And this was the basic rivet nuts that held the icers onto airplanes uh, back in the day. And, and that was the design for this. Um, they ha do have a flat head as you see here, but they're also available in countersunk heads. Uh, opened end and closed end. Um, also, we can put a key uh, slot in there so that that will help with anti-rotation. Now, as I stated earlier, the RN series has a smaller grip range uh, versus the AL and AH and AK series, but it's a great uh, heavy wall uh, rivet nut. Now, the AH series is designed for hex for hex holes. So that will help with anti-rotation as well. So AVK has what you see here, which is the half hex, where you have a hex body up on top and round uh, where the threads are on the inside on the bottom half. Um, this came from the Euro design. Uh, overseas, they had a full bodied hex that was a thick wall like the rivet nut, as you see next to it. And it was more expensive for that full body hex. And also installing it was much harder. It wasn't as easy to install uh, with tooling um, than what the AH is. So the AH, they made it a thin wall design. It still has that spin wall technology where it will fill the hole and uh, give you a good thread and high torque applications. The AT series here is what was known as the nut cert back in the day. They called these nut certs. And this is a little bit different. This AT series, and they also have the AW, which is designed for fiberglass and, and uh, materials that are more brittle, per se. But the way that these nut certs, or AT series, works is the bottom half, when it's installed, it collapses inside the top half. It actually breaks away and slides into the top half. And what that does, they call it 360 degree swaging, where it pushes all the way on that hole and um, wedges itself into the, the hole and the application, giving you a very strong thread. And the good th part about these uh, AT nut certs is that you can put these into a solid block of material. It doesn't have to form a flange on the back side, as I stated, it will wedge itself as the bottom half slides into the top half, making it wider. So the hole on the AT series inserts does vary. The hole size that you want to put in the material, depending upon that thickness, because as you imagine, the bottom half coming into the top half is going to make it much wider. So as the farther up it goes, uh, the, the uh, wider or the spread that is, is going to be tighter into the application. 
Then we have the AR insert. Uh, AR insert was known back in the day as the plus nut. And the plus nut had a straight body. As you see here on this AR, it has a wider middle section there. And that is because they call that pre-bulbing. So what this is designed for is composites and plastic material that will form a, a wide flange on the back side rather than a very tight flange. And with composites or with plastics, you want that wide flange. And the reason it being is because it, you don't want it to pull through. So a wider flange on the top, as you see here, and if you can imagine, there'll be four legs on the bottom side as it flares out, um, giving you a very good flange on the back side. Um, it won't pull through your plastics and softer materials. It gives you a great um, thread in uh, plastics and, and softer materials. So it's a great design. So contact us and let us help you with that, depending upon which application you have and, and which insert would be best for your application. We've been doing this for many years and we're very good at, at uh, designing and helping you with engineering applications for uh, ABK inserts. So we'll get into uh, some of the tooling. So I mentioned earlier that AVK joined up with Aero uh, for their installation tooling. And what you're seeing here, they do have the inline tools. They do have a 90 degree right angle tool. And then also in the middle, you see the pistol grip tools. And these are the most popular. Uh, very good tools. Aero does a great job and AVK made their design uh, very successful by using different RPMs, different bearing setups and gear setups in order to install different um, inserts. So each one of those tools use what's called a, a TAK, which is abbreviation for Thread Adaption Kit. And this is the breakdown is what you see on the right side. You have a hex drive, then you have the mandrel, and then those three pieces there is a bearing set. So what you have in the middle is a thrust bearing and on two outside are your races. Now those races are sintered metal. They are not just standard uh, flat washers. So you always wanna make sure that you're using an AVK brand um, thread uh, bearing set for your thread adaption kits. Now the configuration of this as well is very important. So you'll have the larger or thicker race uh, towards the head of the mandrel or away from the nose and the thinner one on the front. And then you have uh, the next piece there to the left, far left is the nose cone. And that nose cone has that um, uh, protrusion on the front side at the very tip. It's very hard to see, but Basically, that is for the AL, AK, AH series. And then they have one without that protrusion for the nut certs. So there is a little bit of design differences. Uh, but when you call up and uh, ask us for what is the proper one, we can help you out with that. Also, the design engineering manual from AVK has all that information as well. So um, one thing I will say when um, I've gone out and looked at uh, applications, people having problems with installation of the inserts. A lot of times one of these races inside that bearing kit is missing or the entire bearing kit is missing. So uh, very important to make sure if you're having any issues, uh, check to make sure the design and layout of those uh, bearings. So a really nice tool that ABK has, and it looks like a Makita drill. Uh, believe me, it's not. Um, it's, it's got a, a great electronic process control unit inside of it. And it has a nice digital readout up on top as well, where we can adjust the, the torque um, for the different sizes. So just like the aero tools have different RPMs for installing different sizes, where I have uh, this tool has a control that um, I'll get into in the video of how to adjust the tool, um, whether you're going to adjust it up or down, how much torque, uh, depending upon what size insert. So this one will install uh, ALs, AKHs, um, the uh, nut certs as well, the ATs and AW inserts. Um, 
So M4 to M10 and number six to uh, three eighths or the studs from M4. The studs, again, uh, that's the AS series with the insert with the stud that is locked in place. Now you, you saw that thread adaption kit that was on those arrow tools. This uses that same thread adaption kit. So uh, if you have different uh, applications where if you're going to not have air, you can go out on the road and use this where battery operated, it's the same thread adaption kit. You don't have to worry about buying different thread adaption kits uh, for the different tools. So that's a real nice savings. As a uh, nice quick change chuck on it, I'll show you that in the video. Um, comes with an owner's manual, uh, two batteries, a charger, but it also comes with a wax block. And I'll get into that a little bit later as well as to why you'll need that wax block. So here are two of the uh, manual installation tools. So this is a little less expensive. Um, we have the one in red is the AA480N and the one with the, what we used to call back in the day was the Yankee screwdriver or that knob uh, in the center. That's the 510N. Now there is a difference. Um, many years ago, they had the AA480 without the N and the N stands for the new tool. And there's a little bit differences when they've upgraded the uh, new tools. So you want to make sure when you order your um, thread adaption kits or replacement mandrels for these tools that you tell us which tool that you have or order by the correct part number, which is in the catalog. But some people still have the old um, tools around. So we just want to make sure we get you the right mandrels. Mandrels are different. These do have a stroke indicator on them, both of those. Um, both of them have longer long arms. Um, the 510 has a little bit longer arms. It gives you a greater range or strength to install larger inserts. Um, the red one has a knob that you turn after you've squeezed the handle and installed the insert. Whereas the 510, again, has that knob that you pull and your um, unthreads it from the insert very quickly versus the uh, knob and, and unscrewing it with the 480. We do have these in stock and we do uh, have the um, conversion kits in stock as well. It's even more economical, uh, meaning uh, less expensive. It's the AA170 plier tool. Um, this does a, a wide variety of, of inserts and uh, it'll, it's a manual tool. You're gonna have to squeeze uh, in order to set the inserts. And it also has this knob on it, as you see in the, in the picture there, that you will turn in order to uh, unscrew from the insert after you've uh, installed the insert. This will do the ALs, aka AHs. The AT nutserts and AWs, you'll use the AA112. This one is a little bit different compared to the other one where it has a, a 90 degree handle coming off and you turn that T handle to um, collapse the insert. It does have, again, a quick change to it where you can change out the different thread adaption kits and do 443 ace and M3 to M10 in uh, all materials for nut certs, ATs and AWs. So we're gonna get into our uh, poll question here. So uh, that'll show up in a second here. There we go. And we wanna find out a little bit of information of what is uh, what are you having issues with when it comes to uh, blind inserts? And this will help us um, create better content for you, but also we want to see what might be some of the things that are your concerns uh, regarding these. So uh, choosing the correct insert for the application, choosing the proper tool option, finding a vendor with knowledge of inserts. Now that's all Lander. <laughs> we'll help you with that. And uh, Tool fails to properly install the insert and understanding the grip range of inserts. So let's take a look and see how these come. Appreciate your participating in this. All right, and it looks like the tool fails to properly install the insert is one of the, uh, the major replies we got back here. So thank you so much for uh, taking care of that and uh, replying on those. So uh, I, I will discuss that as we come forward here and uh, uh, we'll get into that 
those troubleshooting issues. So um, installing inserts, we want to make sure that uh, we have enough air pressure. So SCFM is static, static cubic feet per minute. So this means while you pull a trigger on those arrow tools that we consistently have 25 uh, static, static cubic feet per minute coming through the tool to make sure that we'll uh, install the insert. So these tools run from um, 80 to 110 PSI. So when we pull that trigger, if there's not enough volume of air coming through, that will quickly come under 25 and therefore the um, insert won't install properly. So you wanna make sure you have a regulator as well as an oiler um, so we can uh, make sure we have proper air for the tool. Now the tool also has a muffler to it. Now it's right near the handle on the arrow tools and there's a retaining ring and then two brass screens and then a fiber uh, muffler on the inside. And if you have too much oil going into the tool or dirty air, that muffler is gonna get filled up and it's not gonna allow air to escape out of the tool. And that will cause um, the insert to fail as well. So if you're having issues, give us a call. Um, one of our customers also um, called us up. We came out to troubleshoot an application. And when I arrived, I saw when they were installing the insert, they were running the tool back and forth in and out over and over again to collapse the insert one time to get it to collapse fully. So automatically I knew it was the air pressure because it wasn't installing on one stroke. So when you pull that trigger, the tool will spin, collapse the insert and stall, and then you rock the trigger and it will exit the insert. So if the insert is installing all the way in, either you've got a wrong grip range or you've got an air pressure issue. Well, this customer did have an air compressor, but it was outside of the building and it um, controlled all the air for the entire manufacturing facility. So they had many lines coming through here and that airflow was not very good. So if you had a couple of tools that were running, it would get under the 25 SCFM and therefore the inserts wouldn't install. You can um, circumvent this by putting a tank closer to the application where you're going to be running these tools and that will have extra air buildup inside that tank or uh, that the compressor will feed to that will allow you uh, enough air in order to uh, work the aero tools. Um, hole size and grip range. So uh, the AVK engineering manual tells you what uh, grip ranges the inserts will work in. So you want to make sure that the uh, insert you choose will fit the material thickness. So they do have varying sizes of uh, the inserts whereas the RNs will have about eight different grip ranges because it's a very small grip range for each insert, whereas the ALs and AKs, AHs have a very wide grip range. So refer to the engineering manual or give us a call and we can help you with that. Um, also the hole itself, um, a lot of times when you're drilling a hole or, or punching a hole, uh, if you have a, a AH series where you have a hexed insert, you're gonna be punching that hole. There could be burrs on the back side. And when you put that insert in, that burr is going to act like a thicker material. So it's not going to collapse properly or straight. So that can be an issue. So you want to make sure that there's no burrs on the inside of that hole. Um, also, your bearing set. I mentioned this before. Um, make sure it's orientated right. Make sure it's not worn out. Make sure it's actually in place. So uh, I would say whenever you buy a new aero tool, you, you buy an extra uh, bearing set with it and also a extra set of mandrels. So the mandrels come in, in 10 uh, mandrels per bag and they're relatively inexpensive, but you'll wanna have those just in case something happens where the uh, mandrel gets cross-threaded. Now I talked about not having enough air. Well, excess air is, is a problem as well that can break the tool or strip out that insert as well. So make sure you're within those guidelines 
um, with what the uh, manual tells you. Um, also, the flange of the inserts itself. When you attach product after you put the insert in place and you want to attach your product to it and put the bolts in or the screws in, you want to make sure that that piece of material that you're attaching to the inserts touches the flange of that insert. And that gives that greater strength. Um, if I'm going to put that insert in there, I can uh, break off a grade five bolt. If I've installed that properly and attached product to it and it's touching the flange, I'll break off a grade five bolt before that insert will spin. Okay. But if it's not touching that flange of the insert, I'm going to have some issues where it could try to uncollapse itself or it could start to spin. If it's a, a very, like a grade eight bolt that's very strong and you really torque down on it, it could upset that insert. So you want to make sure that it's touching that uh, insert when you're uh, attaching your product together. Um, whenever you're using the um, battery operated tool or the pneumatic tool, you always want to start that insert onto the mandrel, only about three quarter to one turn. And the reason uh, you don't thread it all the way in is because these work off of torque. So uh, even the battery operated tool and the air tool, it needs to develop that speed in order to collapse the insert. So if it's threaded all the way on, it doesn't have that speed to generate to collapse the insert. So on the manual tools though, what you do is you thread them all the way on with the handles all the way open, and then you collapse the insert all, uh, by pulling the handles together. So that's two different ways of doing it. The pneumatic tool and battery operated tool, three quarter to one full turn, whereas the manual tools you go ahead and thread it all the way on to uh, the tool. So all of these troubleshooting issues we've seen, I've uh, been doing this for 26 years. Olander has over 200 years of experience. We have uh, Tony Desmond, who's been with the company for over 40 years. Uh, we've got a lot of knowledge and uh, ask our BDMs for assistance with uh, any demos that you'd like or any applications where you're having some issues. So I want to get into our demo uh, for uh, our video for AVK. Hi, everybody. My name is John Butler. I want to welcome you to another fastener moment with the Olander company. Um, I am a certified fastener specialist. I have been in the industry for over 26 years. And the Olander Company started in 1962. We have three locations on the West Coast, two in California, and one in Washington. So today I'll be getting more into the AVK inserts and also the tooling as a review for the different items that we have. We will also be recording um, videos on different tools. that will be in separate um, videos. They'll all be located at olander.com and also on our YouTube channel. So please make sure you check that out for more fastener moments. All right, so I'll be going over the different inserts that ABK Industrial Product has. We have a fine sample here that has the different inserts. And on the back side, you'll see the different profiles that each one has, each one for different applications. So how does a blind insert work? Blind insert meaning you can Put this insert in inside a application where you cannot get to the opposite side. So with any of the inserts, I want to make sure that I go ahead and turn the insert on three quarters or in uh, to one turn to make sure that I'm not cross threading the insert. Then I'll take the material that I'm putting it into here as a demo plate and I'm using the ABK 4878 and I'm going to pull a trigger and collapse the insert. This works off of torque. So it's like this. Now what I have is an insert that will not turn and I have threads on the inside of very thin sheet metal. So what we have here is after we collapse it, we have a flange on the back side. 
there's knurling on this insert to top, stop it from spinning as well. And we also have inserts that would have a hexed punched hole for added anti-rotation. And AVK has their hexed inserts for that. So this is an AVK stud. So it's a regular AL series insert and they put a stud inside the insert and then they hit it here to keep it from anti-rotation. These tools that I'm showing you today can, can also install these stud inserts. If you need a watertight um, solution for your inserts, we also have blind inserts that are closed in so that they don't have a hole all the way through it. These are also installed with the same tooling that we have. We also have the original rivet nut from AVK and the AR series, which is um, basically known as a plus nut. And this is used for plastic applications. So the battery operated tool, the AVK 4878, actually has a digital readout and I can adjust the torque per the manual that AVK ships with each one of these parts. So how do I go ahead and adjust the torque on this? So I want to take the battery off, slide it back on, pull the trigger first, slide it back on, and I'll have a tone. Once I get that tone, I can go ahead and release the trigger and adjust how much torque I'm adjusting the insert for per what insert I'm installing. Now I go ahead and pull the trigger again, take the battery off, release the trigger, slide the battery back on, and now I'm ready to pull the insert and add different um, applications for different um, torque settings. So what I always want to do is about every 100 inserts, I want to go ahead and use a wax block and just pull a trigger and build up a little bit of wax on the mandrel itself. This helps with application um, insulation to make sure that the uh, insert will, will spin freely and, and uh, uh, set, okay? So the front end of this tool can also be used with their arrow tools. So I go ahead and pull this back and turn it and it will open up and that will release my TAK, also known as a thread adaption kit. So a thread adaption kit has this hex drive, the mandrel inside itself, as well as a bearing set. Now this bearing set, I want to talk about this, is very important. It comes with two races and also a bearing on the inside, a thrust bearing. So these are sintered metal. You always want to make sure you buy them from AVK. Don't use just a standard flat washer because it's not going to be sintered metal and it's not going to be uh, lubricated enough to set the insert. So I'll put it back in, push it in, take my hex drive, put it inside the insert. Now my tool, as I said, was already open. I'll push this to the inside of the insert of the tool, push down and lock it in place and I'm ready to go. So the one thing I really like about AVK is I'm going to open this back up again, is this same thread adaption kit also fits the arrow tool, which is from AVK. So on here again, I have a push button that will open this up. I take my thread adaption kit I line it up with the drive on the inside. Push it in place, turn it here to lock it, and it's ready to install inserts. Now this has a rocking trigger. It is a pneumatic tool, and it does have different RPM settings or bearing setups. For this one is a 900 RPM. So the AVK engineering manual will tell you what RPMs to use for which inserts. And this one happens to be a 900 RPM setup. So when I wanna install the insert, again, I wanna turn it on three quarters to one turn, and then has a rocking trigger here. I'll hook it up to air, pull the trigger. After putting it inside the hole, 
It will collapse the insert. Once it is installed, the tool will stall. Then I rock the trigger back the other way and I'll get out of the insert. And that's how the arrow tools work. Now we also have um, less expensive tools. So these tools work just as well, except they're manual placement. So I, again, I wanna go ahead and turn this insert onto the tool, take the insert, put it inside the hole, and then I'll collapse the insert. Now I need to adjust this for the particular size, but you get the idea of how it would work and it would collapse the same way. Uh, the only thing different on this was I would have to turn the insert here, the knob, to get out of the insert, okay? Now the other inserts that we have are known as nut certs, and these are the ones that collapse inside themselves instead of having a flange on the back side. So the, the way that these work is with the high torquer tool or with the arrow tool or the AVK 4878. That's not an issue. Either way you want to go, but this is a little less expensive to use. So when I put this inside the application, I'll hold this bar here and then turn the T handle here, which will collapse the insert. Okay. This has a conversion kit on the inside as well. Here I have it in the locked position. I'll open that up and that allows me to get to the thread adaption kit. So AVK has different inserts for different applications. Consult AVK or the Olander company, of course, at www.olander.com. My name is John Butler, and this has been a Fastener Minute. Thank you very much. All right, so no one's going to have to worry about me taking their job uh, as an actor, that's for sure. But uh, those are fun to do, um, and it only took about 67 takes. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> so a little information on Olander and, and uh, why you want to call Olander. We have over $8 million worth of inventory in standard fasteners, tooling, and industrial hardware. We don't just do nuts and bolts and washers, uh, anything from adhesives. Uh, we're the largest helicoil distributor in the United States, large AVK distributor. Uh, but we have tapes and gloves and uh, PPE, uh, protect, PPE products as well. So uh, we're there for you. We've been in business since 1962, and we have a lot of uh, knowledgeable business development managers that can help you with your applications. Um, engineering, um, you know, we have a lot of um, experience over 200 years. Um, designing um, your applications, working with you to, to make sure that you have the right fasteners in place uh, for your products. And since 1962, we've been a family business. We still are. And uh, we're happy to uh, be here in uh, Sunnyvale and up in uh, Rancho Cordova and Woodenville, Washington. And uh, we would just like to have everybody that comes into Olander be considered as part of the family. So the solutions are product lines. These are some of the biggest names on the market. Uh, from, from Stanley, we have the, the Helicoil, Pop Guide, Spiralock, Avdel, Tucker, and Gripco products to Bosch, 3M, AVK, Arconic, Loctite. So we have a lot of the products that you need for your applications and uh, we can help you out. Uh, many of our customers, uh, they come to us with products that they don't know where to go for to, to purchase them. Uh, they had them specced in by the manufacturer and asked us to help them out. So this is something we do on a daily basis, um, as well as our VMI programs. Um, as far as the documentation goes, we've had a lot of customers in medical device that come to us because they're unable to get their chem and phys reports, um, 2D specs, uh, meaning prints, um, full traceability on parts, lot numbers, everything we have um, at Olander that we sell has lot numbers to it. So it's fully traceable back to the manufacturer. And uh, we can help you out with any of the certs that you need. So that's basically what I'm trying to get across to you here. So I want to get into the Q&A questions here. And let's see what we can help you out with. 
Um, one, do you think a ratchet handle tool for inserts is a good tool as well? Uh, very much so, Marcel. Um, there's a lot of different manufacturers out there that have different applications. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about AVK, but uh, we're able to help out with the different applications uh, for, for different tools for different applications. Uh, Lee says, uh, can a blind stud be put in 45 degrees to the surface of solid uh, metal, not perpendicular to thin wall? So um, as long, let's see, now the material that you're putting it into, if you take, um, as long as it's within a grip range and you drive that at an angle, the studs are not going to work properly. They're going to pull up to one side because that material is going to uh, be at an angle. If you have the nut certs, that doesn't make a difference. Uh, the nut cert can be put in an angle and collapsed up and it's going to be at that, that angle there. Now, what I would do is I would be able to go ahead and do a slight counter bore on that in order to get that at that angle. But I'd love to look at the, the material thickness on that and uh, see if we can work with you to, to get that in there. The problem is that we wanna make sure that when you attach the other product to it, that it's touching the flange of the insert or the stud. So let us uh, help you with that. Um, Marcel, what are the advantage of semi versus full hex inserts? Great question. I'm happy to give you a call, Marcel, and talk to you about that. Um, the thick wall is uh, versus thin wall. You're going to have a big price range on those two inserts. We do not have a cordless tool for half 13 inserts or are others on the market. And we're happy to uh, look at that application for you. Uh, let's see our sales rep, Mr. Tom Buddenbone out of Texas. Is it critical to make sure the bearing sets in the nose to be properly lubricated? Thick grease is best. I, I totally agree, Tom. It, it is critical. That wasn't a question, it was a statement. <laughs> so uh, they do come pre-lubed uh, to make sure that when you um, start your day, make sure you pull that TAK apart and make sure that that bearing set is in good working order and there is plenty of grease on that. Uh, let's see, Daniel, how do various closed end upper, let's see, how well do various closed end upper flanges seal? Are some seals, uh, series better than others in for thin fluids like gasoline, for example? So ABK is able to produce different seals depending upon the application. The AL insert is what we put the EPDM seals, or P, they're actually PVC uh, seals on the inserts. And that's what works well. The one thing I will say regarding the grip ranges, when you put a seal underneath an AVK insert that changes the grip range because you're adding material um, to that um, insert. So there, it, it acts like a thicker material. Uh, inside that e engineering manual, um, they'll help you with that. It, it does give you the grip ranges. Um, if you have larger volumes, we can look at different seals to put underneath those um, inserts. As far as putting them on a rivet nut, an RN series, um, I don't know if we've done that before. I can definitely get back to you on that. Um, I'm happy to help you out. Daniel, send me an email on that if you would, please. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Lisa from Fastener News, and Lisa wants to know, are you seeing demand for inserts to be used in 3D manufactured parts? So um, the one thing, a lot of them are already putting in threads there, um, so they don't have to tap that. Um, I won't say that there's uh, a greater percentage that are doing tapped versus um, a completed part. Usually when you have a 3D manufactured part, you're putting the threads, you're manufacturing that inside of it, that you're not going to be wanting to put an additional faster in place when you can have it fully developed when you're uh, printing out that part. So uh, good question. I hadn't thought about that, but uh, that's the answer. Tom, um, I was answering a comment. Well, thank you. <laughs> Lisa, thanks, Job. 
Nice job. All right. So those are the questions that we have. Uh, we do have some more time here. I want to get through another slide. So if you have another comment you'd like to, to uh, make or ask, please uh, give me a shout here. All right. Let's collapse that. All right, so I appreciate everybody attending today. Hopefully uh, you learned something today and uh, you're a little entertained, I hope. Um, you can click on the links below. Um, these are our how to reach us. There's our YouTube channel as well. We have many different inserts, um, bolts, adhesives, things of that nature that we discuss in our webinars. Uh, you'll find them very informative and very useful. Um, you can also reach out to us on our webpage, e-commerce. We are so close with e-commerce. We, we've got a soft launch that I won't talk about, right? We won't talk about that because we don't want to overload our system, but e-commerce is a step away. Uh, we'll have that coming shortly. Um, our website also has uh, the 2D specs or 2D prints and 3D CAD models that you can download um, for your engineering uh, and design work. So look at our website. It, it's very helpful. Also reach out to us on LinkedIn. We have some very good posts there. Also reach out to us at rfq at olander.com. Stephen Meigel is waiting for you to send in an email. Uh, you can also reach out to me at jbutler, J-B-U-T-L-E-R at olander.com. That's O-L-A-N-D-E-R. I want to thank everybody. I really appreciate you logging in and, and joining us today. Uh, look for the future. We have many more videos coming and we'll keep you entertained and educated. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Well, we got one more question here. Let me just go to this one more time. And David Byrne, great job. Thanks, boss. You guys have a great day and we'll talk with you soon. Call our BDMs at Olander.